Next, um, uh, last year we had a uh, presentation by um, uh, Chris Welty. Chris Welty is the uh, uh, one of the key uh, designer architect of uh, a very famous, very important uh, uh, project and, and system called IBM's Watson, right? the one that defeated Jeopardy. And uh, so he was here and he gave a fairly good insightful talk. So this would be a very interesting thing for us to review. Uh, we have reviewed this last class, but it remains very uh, relevant. Um, now, um, an important thing to notice about this class is that this is kind of a living class, right? So this is not um, a class on a material that um, uh, relates to something that is well understood uh, by everyone. This is not a class on, uh, let's say, basis of information retrieval. Or it is not a class on basic algorithms in AI. Uh, or it is not a class on parsing. Those are things that are very well known. Uh, this is a class on things that continue to evolve. So I have been teaching a class on semantic web uh, since, I think, 2001. Uh, that probably was the first class um, that was ever taught. You may want to record this. Yeah, so that, 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 that was probably the first class uh, that was taught on that topic. The term was introduced in 1999. And um, uh, every time I have taught the class, it has been different. The content has been different because the field has kept on uh, moving. Uh, new things have come, new standards have come, new technologies have come, new applications have come. So it has always, uh, you know, and, and this is, uh, as you should know, a very advanced class. Advanced class in the sense that this may not be the most complex programming class as such, but it's advanced in that um, uh, it assumes uh, a number of things. It assumes that you are a decent programmer, that you know uh, some programming. Uh, it assumes you know a little bit of uh, web technologies. If not, uh, you have the willingness to pick it up very, very fast and invest in that time to pick up as soon as possible. It assumes that um, uh, uh, you are ready for what I call participatory learning. So this is not a class where instructor comes and gives a lecture, you take some notes, you have a textbook, uh, you read the um, a textbook and you come ready for an exam at some point in time and that has medium and midterm and final exam. It's not a class like that. This is a class where you actually participate. That means it's a class where you come ready with reading the material ahead of the time um, and that's why I've kind of put there that you probably will need to spend four to eight hours per class that you attend here. Right? Uh, and so it's generally not a good idea to take this class um, uh, if you are taking more than two num two classes at this time, meaning this class plus one more class. And if you're taking more than two, let's talk. Maybe maybe you are able to do it. Maybe that's all you are doing it. But many of you have um, something else going on, like many of you are TA or RA or have other things going on. So that's why like there, you know, some important thing. And then there are two class. And uh, if you are um, I think most of you are not uh, here, and this is not your first uh, semester here. Uh, this is not your first semester, right? You're here. So uh, then you can generally know what it means to take uh, uh, two demanding courses. But this will be fairly demanding. Um, on the other hand, it is expected that you are doing this class because you really want to take the class and that you really learn from this class. And this is something that really matters to you for your own sake, for your own career choices for your own job uh, search in the future, uh, marketably, whatever it is, right? Or, or satisfy your uh, desires uh, in, in learning. So um, you'll be doing it not for a grade or uh, a requirement. You'll be doing it because it really will uh, get you engaged, really find it very valuable for, for your own sake. And um, so, that extra time that you spend, I think you'll be more like spending it uh, because you will enjoy it, because you think it will be valuable for yourself, right? So um, that that uh, is critical. Now, given that um, much of what we do in the class is not very repeatable, is for example, we have discussions, you be 
you know, I will ask the questions, somebody else will ask the questions, somebody else will answer. If uh, I know the answer, I will answer. If I don't know the answer, I will discuss how to get the answer. So, um, it's not some inexperience that cannot be repeated out of the class. That means you are expected to attend this class. You are expected to come to all the classes. And let's start to try to class, start the class at, uh, at two o'clock, uh, as in, or as quickly after two o'clock as possible. Um, and uh, if you miss the class, I think um, uh, because like if the grading is not really focused on an exam that you can, can come to the exam time and you can get whatever grade you want. You lost something. I can't repeat that that well, and uh, that means that you didn't get all that you need to get from the class. So that's why you have to come to the class. You have to come prepared to the class. You have to now. Uh, at the same time, um, uh, the other interesting thing here is that in for this kind of class, is uh, there is not an expectation that all of you will get exactly the same amount of learning. In fact, uh, I think. You know, all of you will come at the different level of uh, preparedness, and all of you will come with different level of expectations. And I want to help you really reach that level of expectation. And like, think about grading as whether you really make big um, jump or where you started with on this general area of uh, work uh, of technology and research. That is what your grade is about. Not so much as so some of you may get that much because you started very low. Others started here and you got, got there. Fine, and maybe both of both of that is either of that is sufficient uh, if for yourself. If I see that you really have learned, then it will probably reflect in your grade. Um, I have given some guideline on the grades, uh, but you can see that um, having uh, you know come ready for the class, you know, clear that you participate, clear that you understood the material through participation uh, is uh, uh, a significant portion of uh, uh, the grade. Uh, some quiz uh, and some assignments that will be given to you. Uh, that's another part, and then really the project, which will be the largest component, right? So where you are uh, putting into practice what you are learning in the class and on your own, right? And in a team project. So most of the projects are going to be team projects. Um, the, the general uh, mindset is that uh, I want to try and create. Um, more like a work environment where you, we are designing new, where we are going to new market, and we are designing a, a new product or service for that market. And so, uh, very often we are going to learn. Maybe there's a team leader, like here I'm a team leader of sort, um, and then um, you know uh, I'll guide you as much as I can. But uh, I think you bring a lot of uh, your own uh, reading and understanding to the table, and you keep on uh, learning about um, uh, the topic and then you start putting that into practice. And um, there is a, um, there's going to be a wide choice of uh, the um, um, uh, topic that you can work on. So uh, does anybody have a book, this, uh, 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 class book, I forgot to bring it from my class. So, so, so let me just, so if you see, um, Thank you. You know, we are, we are talking about semantics empowered web 3.0 and uh, managing enterprise, social, sensor, cloud-based application services for advanced applications. So you can see that there's a pretty broad coverage. I mean, I can we can clearly have a class on its own uh, f uh, on social data, and we cannot complete all that is to know. And here. And I can, we can do the same for the sensor data, and again, that would be too much. Cloud computing, again, we can spend more than a class just to, more than a semester just to get through everything, right? So, um, um, however, what we are going to do is, we are not going to learn everything about, uh, let's say, sensors. But we might, one of you or two of you might end up doing a project that involves sensors. Uh, in the context of exploiting sensor data. So the idea here is that, all these things, uh, enterprise data, social data, sensor data, cloud computing, everything is happening as um, in, in this current generation of web. Everything you know uh, is happening with uh, web at its core. And then you add, earlier um, uh, you know, we had um, machine sensors, so like the sensors that would go on air conditions, or 
uh, and that will tell you whether how well they are. If you have HVAC system in a building, then you have sensor that will tell you about how well uh, your machines are doing. Uh, now, those sensors are what is called as Internet of Things, meaning they are communicating over Internet and the web. And they are becoming part of a web application. So there will be some web application somewhere which is continuously getting data from that sensor. So our, our interest won't be uh, so much in the physical uh, system or hardware, but sensor generates the data. And how do you exploit that data in a web-centric application, in a web-based application? That is what our interest will be. Right? And um, now the, we can come up with many, many um, uh, you know, applications. So again, um, it's like uh, suppose you are going to um, uh, go into a new market and you know, coming back to the example of a startup or a new company or your company going into a new direction, um, uh, you often talk to the customers to figure out what does market need. Sometimes you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, thought yourself, you feel that world needs what you have to offer. But then you, you know, uh, start with some assumptions and you modify that and that is a process that goes on in designing something. The same thing would go on here in your project. You start with something. In some cases, I'm happy to give you a whole bunch of ex uh, um, options to you. But then uh, you're going to pick something. And you're going to take uh, charge of it yourself or your team. In a team environment together, you take a charge of it and get something done. My experience shows that um, um, most of the time, uh, students are able to um, uh, surprise themselves how much they can potentially get done. It can be very struggling and I'll be pushing hard. But uh, when they are done and then when they give a final project presentation or demo, uh, they will be surprised how much they got accomplished. Right? From the time that you kind of started this project to the time that you um, actually achieve something. So uh, I, mean, I would consider to be a very successful uh, class for me if uh, you go out with a feeling that you really know how to get into this general area and do something new, something innovative, something interesting. And the other thing that I tell my students all the time, um, especially my research students, that uh, you know, the, we, this is not about learning, and I'm not interested in giving you particular skills. What happens is that uh, in this area, uh, things move on very fast, technologically. And as I said, you know, what I taught um, and what we were doing in the early classes on semantic web, or even web, I used to teach class on web um, itself, web, web information system, first time I taught was in 1996. So um, uh, uh, that would keep on changing. You know, even even I, I, I'm not able to keep up with much of all the technologies. It's quite possible that some of you might know some of the technologies better than I do. The thing we will do is, Rather than the skills or even learning, we want to also understand learning how to learn. So when you come up with an idea, when you come up with some formulation of a project, then you will figure out a way or I will be there available as a guide or, or you know, uh, as to how do I pick up what I need to pick up to do what I need to do. Because that's what you need in the real world. Once you are done with your course work, in this uh, days in technological uh, environment, you really have to um, um, keep up to date. Uh, but you can't continue to go, uh, you know, for traditional classes. Yes, you might take web internet-based, you know, uh, classes. Uh, you might listen to tutorials. You might listen to talks on YouTube and other places. But that way, that is fine. So you can find a way, uh, different ways to to keep yourself up to date. You will do that here, um, and and get confidence that you did. That way, you can learn and you can pick up what you want to learn. So uh, these are some of the um, stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. So uh, are there any questions at this point? No? All right. Um, now, um, so I had given um, this preamble for the lecture and I've given this reading and reviewing material. Now this in the first class had rather high bar to reading and uh, reviewing material. But let me uh, get a sense of what each of you did uh, for this class. And this is something that will be routine. I'll ask you 
uh, you know, how prepared you are for the class. I, that will help me or whosoever he takes the class calibrate where we are. So, uh, why don't we start with you? What did you, uh, what, if anything, here you looked at or reviewed? I uh, pretty much reviewed all the, uh, all, mo most of the uh, different uh, readings that you linked to. Excellent. Now that's, this is music to my ears. Wonderful. Especially, you know, the idea was that be sure to at least uh, read uh, or go through uh, the one in the highlight those in the highlight because those are probably the most important or at least basic or you know uh, accessible. Uh, for example, this is rather advanced and this will be able to appreciate this more. Sometimes though what I do is um, I, I like to see things that are a bit ahead of my current level but it, so far as it gives me target, it gives me actually advance uh, you know notice that, you know I like to understand that. So. Uh, something hap is happening in artificial intelligence this is called uh, deep uh, learning. Well, I don't know. I, mean, I know something about machine learning, but I don't know deep learning as much. And, uh, so um, I would, uh, you know, pick up something and read, uh, you know, something by uh, uh, some a researcher who is very, very, um, who is doing res research uh, in the topic, meaning is very, very well versed with that. And then hopefully I'll fill up the gaps going to where I need to go. All right, that's that's great. Sh uh, uh, Surendra, what did you read? Yeah, I actually read most of the items. Hmm? I I mainly reviewed the highlighted items, mm -hmm. and I gone through few other things as well. Okay. How about you? The highlighted items and some of the Google. I read all the Google Plus um, stuff from last semester. Oh wow! 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 So 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 help. Uh, so te tell us what what is your takeaway? What where you are? Uh, what do you, what is your feeling? Um, what are your expectations? Anything you want to say? Well, I uh, I do a lot of work with uh, sensor metadata outside of school, and uh, I wanted to figure out the difference between what research is going on in semantic web and sensor webs versus what I'm doing at work to see how I can make it better, faster, more uh, viable. You work at AFRL? I work for uh, NGA. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay, that's exciting. That's good. Yeah, yeah we probably have a broad, broad variety of data then to work with. And uh, those, uh, I can foresee a lot of applications as well. Okay. How you? Uh, yeah, I went through not only highlights, as I start from some reviewing, and uh, I went through most of the lectures previous years and even discussion of students representations and I like uh, because I started from the beginning I like this history of the web history of web semantic uh, especially the web applications uh, I remember and I, I just uh, pass in my mind those I was in high school or pre secondary school and I was fighting to get the internet connection was expensive it escape came and it was very interesting for me I just review all, oh yes, it was very interesting to chat with someone, um, you don't see them, but they, they don't recognize you, but you can communicate, mm -hmm. whether you are ready or not. So from that time, I just review, review, I reached the end of point, and I really like the way the students, they discussed, they, they had discussion about different topics, and the most important thing and interesting for me was the, the individual study for each chapter, they went through those and they present themselves. Sure. Okay. And uh, they present themselves, so it was very interesting that they, by own uh, uh, research, they bring a topic for presentation, and not only by that chapter domain, they could have collect more information, more uh, research, and bring for students, and very quickly, for us maybe take time to read the chapter, but to have a presentation by the students, always was faster and catching. Um, on time and faster so for me it was very interesting to go through that and especially web semantic which is related to my research now um, the paper which mostly started to present and publish so all this was of my observation mm. and uh, and again i reviewed the highlights okay. i'm quite updated Did you read yeah i read the the highlighted parts and uh, i just started uh, looking at the youtube video for the so 
So, so when you look at the highlighted parts and all that, I mean, uh, did you find most of it self-explanatory or it was kind of uh, skimming and you think that we need to get back to it? I think especially that article, I, I think maybe some time needs to be given to that. Which article? Uh, the, the semantic scales up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so good. So I think the point here is though, what I want to be able to do is to cover the basic ideas and to be able to discuss those kind of articles. That would be very valuable. Okay. Now we have a there's some delicate thing, uh, you know that uh, uh, that that uh, that we need to worry about. And that delicate thing is that on one hand we are going to talk about something that is uh, latest and. Uh, where there is um, not a clear agreement. For example, um, when you have uh, look, when I talk about some things here uh, in the talk today and tomorrow, and then there is this video that I just posted um, uh, moments ago, so not all of you will have seen that. And in this video, there is basically an interview of a whole bunch of people who have also been involved in, the, uh, uh, who also played a good role in semantic web. Uh, is, it, it includes Question, you know, Tim Berners-Lee's view, it includes questions uh, by some other uh, people uh, that are, some of them are well known and some of, uh, and some others are very well, uh, are, are rather expert. So on one hand, I'm interested in pursuing innovation and to think on our own and come up with new way of thinking, how do I exploit sensor data and what are the things that we you know, we will be covering, for example, uh, uh, the core process on making sensor data uh, more meaningful for applic building applications. Or there is a very well known topic called sensor fusion or sensor data fusion. So you have anything, any situation and different types of sensors are giving the data and how do you bring them together? How do you understand the event from the multiple streams of multi-sensor data? Now that is a high level topic, uh, but I also at the same want a point, don't want to leave everything at just high level. I wanted to make it very concrete, so that's where the project comes in. Now not all of you will do project on sensor, but if he does project on sensor, all of us will understand from his experience and his views because one of the things this class will require you is to present your work very well. And that way, you are educating, you know, I, you know, my task becomes easier, I don't uh, have to learn everything, I can't. But you yourself have learned in the class, applied something, and now you're going to transfer that uh, knowledge to somebody else. So that's something also we're going to do. In AI, we call it transfer learning, right? So that we're going to do that too. But the point is though, that I want to transcend not just, I don't, uh, the, the, the high ideas and concepts and uh, latest themes, uh, what is happening, late, you know, what are some new interesting innovations in Google semantic search and yet you and I can't do Google, you know, Google search but there is something that we can do uh, that exploits the same kind of ideas in a different application where we have access to some data and hands on. So I want to do that too. Right? So that is the challenge and this is another unique thing about this class. So that the discussion, participant comes about concepts and understanding and yet, uh, on the parallel, I want you to be able to implement and you know really realize that. That is not easy. That is very challenging. And 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 um, uh, how do we get about um, uh, in parallel? Now, how do you go on these two paths in parallel, often intersecting? That you know the two is is something that is interesting. So, for example, after this initial one or two classes, I will have uh, one of my students take class on RDF to ground ourselves on very specific technology, right? So, and then you get a sense, uh, some high level concepts that I have discussed. For example, I will emphasize the importance of links or relationships in semantics. And then, once you have uh, looked, uh, you know, gotten hands on exposure to uh, RDF, you will see how is, it, how is that manifested exactly in RDF Basically, your people, subject, predicate, object, and that predicate is the relationship. So then we will be able to, uh, you know, get, uh, you know, uh, 
concrete view of these things that we will talk about. So that's what we will try to do, right? And then again, this is possible to do if you're going to keep up with what you seem to be doing, meaning coming well prepared. Matthew? I had uh, gone through some of the historical presentations and some of the uh, uh, semantic web uh, presentations. Listed, uh, I enjoyed uh, the uh, basically the historical view of how semantic web came about. Was this uh, Team Berners List uh, present uh, talk or something else? It was uh, one of the class presentations. Oh, okay. On Oh, the one that the one that I gave on Infocosm, uh, so. the 1995 one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't gotten to some of the other ones yet, but I was going to get to them. You need to because uh, uh, it's not that uh, this is you know the next class you have some more coming up, right? So to keep <coughs> up with it, uh, try not to build any backlog. That will be not 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 healthy. Uh, did you get, you just got the access last week, yesterday? Yeah, I just gone through this book uh, and some highlighted items. Oh, you did? Yeah. Did you read chapter one? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. That's good. Yeah, I'm impressed. Okay. I went through the highlighted items and, yeah, and I read to one more book. Okay. Three months of my summer. Okay. Okay. How about you, Jerry? Uh You didn't give me access yet. You didn't ask for it then? Uh, did you get an email from me from uh, right, uh, Wings? Yeah, but I thought you'd give me access. Uh, no, it says that uh, give me your Gmail. I would not do you have it. my email? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I, you already had it. You didn't need I it. Can't, I, I don't try to make a... Uh, oh, this is somebody I know. No. Well, you signed me up for the class. I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, this, we, we, we need to do this. Um, and do so soon. I, I, will, I will get caught up as soon as I get access. For sure. Good, good. Wonderful. Um, now, um, let us, uh, in that case, so, so this is impressive, this is good. Uh, I think if we can continue that, this will be uh, a fun uh, job, you know, class, because apparently you all are interested. Let us, um, let us go through these questions. I think it will be interesting to discuss, right? So, uh, uh, what I am going to do is to ask each of you to create your own uh, uh, class web page. So uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, I'll send you the template, okay? I think we need to replace this laptop. Matthew, please help. Uh, if this laptop has lost the yellow button, so there is no. Uh, or we should just put a mouse here. So we'll get. Um, any mouse and I'll be okay. Mouse is still in This mouse? Yes. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If it was you, I would Okay, so uh, uh, here, uh, this is how you'll be creating a you know, uh, all you will be creating a web page, um, and um, basically, um, uh, so like your name, uh, you know, this this thing for everyone, and then your name, and uh, then uh, you know, you know the instruction. But what you just put is your name, email, and the reason is that if I want to send you um, a response, I could just uh, directly click on your email and send you a response right from there, and that is where you go. Uh, although um, uh, I think uh, I can always put uh, you know in the Google Doc uh, in my comment plus I mean your email and that uh, you see that uh, an answer so that would be an interesting thing <coughs> and then here is where you are going to take questions and answer then uh, you know uh, uh, and that there will be a section I think in fact you should put that in bold highlight and uh, you will have assignments and solutions so what will happen is that. So, uh, uh, we will, uh, here's what will happen, uh, you will take, cut and paste these questions and start your answers, write your answers to each other. Now, I will do one thing, um, if the questions are rather straightforward, um, I will let you pass that, or you just say, um, I know the answer uh, and I, you know, if you don't 
you know, some things, if you save time, you know for sure what the answer, you don't want my feedback, then you can say, I know the answer and we can go, you know, that's okay. But generally it is a good idea if you can, you know, give the answer. So, um, the other thing is that uh, I, I started, uh, you know, uh, one thing, about, uh, you know, this is very important, academic uh, honesty or integrity thing, very crucial. So, it's very important that I'm able to trust you guys, everyone, right? Uh, because I explained to you that grading is, you know, from a different perspective of what you learn, not so much from the exam perspective anyway. And, um, and then we become very clear when you parts in the class and you come prepared, it's, uh, you know, you'll be uh, uh, true. But I want to uh, clarify something. So, unlike this class, then we, I actually want you to collaborate. So, the thing that you need to uh, be careful about is when you say you are writing the answer, it should be yours. But you could be discussing with anybody verbally, or you should you could share you know uh, the tip saying this thing has the answer about that, and this thing discusses that. If you want to exchange that information with anyone or even on the Jigo Plus, you're welcome. It's just that when you write the code for your pro, you know for your project that must be all yours but if you um, design on the board a sketch of the code that's fine then you then you can collaborate your your team uh, you know suppose you are you have team project with three three persons and uh, you guys jointly design an architecture and all that that is welcome it's like you know you're working in a company um, and uh, you are working together on a project and you collaborate so that is welcome when you think, when you claim something to be yours, that must be yours, kind of thing, right? So that is where you need to be uh, caref uh, careful. Um, uh, so, so uh, uh, all right. So uh, let us go here. So, so when and how was uh, World Wide Web started? Pardon? Yes, so that is when he, I think, wrote initial proposal, first proposal, and uh, so it's 1989 or 90 is what um, uh, you would um, say to be the start of the web. So what were the two parts of the proposal? Parts of uh, web, two parts. Initial, yeah, very initial proposal. What are there? And two components. I did. I know that. Hmm. You're going to do very advanced web, so you better know what is very basic, right? Surrender. Yeah. Unicode. Yeah. Unicode. Unicode. No, but uh, I mean that's that's very important. That was very early part of it. We'll come back to that, but not that, that's not the answer to my question. Application starts. Uh, World Wide Web was, uh, you know, the original proposal of World Wide Web. What were the two basic components of that? Above pages and database. Not exactly. Uh, uniform. Search. Might be one of them. The HTTP. Search engine. And the IPv4. Oh, no, oh, HTML. HTML. Right. You have two parts fundamentally: mm -hmm. a page or a document. It's basically a document, right? And uh, he chose <coughs> HTML. What was HTML? What, how did HTML come from? Where did it come from? Smart XML. XML. No, XML, 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 XML was invented way after. Oh, hypertext. Yes, hypertext, but um, there was something else. The document aspect of it. Uh, there was a publishing standard, standard for publishing. HTML. HTML. Right? Struck S, I think stands for structured, if I remember correctly. But uh, structured uh, something, general markup language or something like that. Okay? ML is markup language. And the idea was, you take a book, right? And the book has a uh, title, and it has um, a preface, and it has uh, 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 you know, index, uh, sorry, content, 
and then a chapter and then chapter has um, sections and sections have paragraph and section headings and paragraphs and right that is the whole structure of a document right a published document as GML was the way to mark it up just the same way in HTML every you know h1 right you know h1 header right or so so that header in all the tags that were part of HTML came from uh, a sub where basically subset or variations of SGML. SGML was for comprehensive published document. That was too complex. Remember, when any time document is sent to read, you need to pass. You want you want to make it uh, limited, right, in complexity. So. Tim Berners Lee and basically the idea was to say let's simplify it and some subset was chosen uh, you know initially some uh, core elements that were important right and um, uh, then um, uh, and that, that started with HT, HTML and now what is the current version of HTML and who, uh, who what is the standard body W3C, World Wide Consortium, right? Okay. What is the second part of uh, the web component? Uh, HTTP, right? So what does P stand for? Uh, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So what does it mean? It means that there is a page somewhere in those, you know, server, and there is a page rendered somewhere, right? Client. In those days, client server was a modern thing. Before that, you know, it was uh, these uh, mainframes, and then client server was a rage in, in those days. So it's a very well known stuff. In, we're talking about late 80s, right? And you know, that's when the ideas were taken. So the idea was that you have a document that you need to be able to render anywhere on any terminal, right? Because before that, what happened? I did have what you call as the pleasure or pain of using internet before web was there right so so uh, so we had tcp ip and we had we had email before that and uh, you know we had ftp right so we could exchange the file from one place to another place now when i take a file from one server and send it to take it to another server how can i read that file i can read that file only if i'm using the same software to view it yeah that was a big problem you had machines by different manufacturers and when the file came you would not know how to open it unless the easiest thing you could do is to send so called totally plain text with ASCII characters right? that everything could open so the what was the motivation that uh, TBL had TBL is Tim Bernstein what was the motivation here He wanted to be able to share. Right. He want everybody else to be able to. So, who who was the who was he serving? Who were his customers? Scientists. What kind of scientists? Physicists. Physicists. At <coughs> sir, I I it so happened that I gave um, an invited talk. I uh, was the you know special guest uh, in, in early nineties somewhere. And so uh, I think my talk was on workflow. At that time, I had, we had a very uh, uh, extensive research on workflow. Uh, but I, I had gone to CERN. You know, we know. Uh, you know, I had chance to meet Tim uh, many, many times because um, uh, I, you know my organization earlier, my company, and then uh, Right State. We have been, you know, W3C member, and some of our work has actually become commercial. WT standards. Maybe, <coughs> maybe we'll get to that. Maybe we want to do this class. But um, so uh, so obviously he has been director of WT founder and director of WTC. Um, and and uh, uh, but anyway, so so I saw his desk and all that. And it's a history in a way, in that sense. And uh, uh, and the, you know, of course those huge colliders and everything. Walk into that. Very interesting place. But the point was uh, the point is that physicists were generating a lot of data. And they were having, having hard time sharing with the rest of the world, with other researchers, other partners they had. And so they were going through all this pain of exchanging the data 
he wanted to make that pay, he, his proposal was to make it easy, you know, easier for them. So that they can publish the data once and everybody can access it without a lot of, you know, doing this and that, right? So that is how this, uh, you know, common format and a very simple protocol, extremely simple, get, put get, right? Those things. Now, one thing I'm not going to do, but that you should do is, if you're not, uh, you know, refresh yourself with the very core basics of the uh, HTTP, please do so. Understanding, right? And how do you post a query? And how to get a response, right? That you should for sure know. Okay. So, here we discuss, and how many years we recently completed last year? 20. 25. So, uh, so uh, or maybe we completed the early this year, but it's 25. Uh, so there is, um, uh, uh, in, in what was the hashtag used during that okay, occasion? Anybody? So here is the thing, okay? Um, in observation I'll make. What I'm going to try to do is to really be up to date like you on this kind of stuff. The the thing is, you, you, if you've gone through the Google Plus, you will see so many. In in the book, I have things that are relatively new, but not the latest. But in that, I have the latest thing like um, Chris Welty's talk on, you know, Watson and things behind Watson, the mind of Watson, right? And today, if you are going to be successful, you have to learn how to become a member of the web. For example, one simple thing all my students know, I talk to them very often is that, today how do you get a job? 80 more than 80 percent of jobs come via networking. And how do, what is one best way to do networking? Uh, Where? Uh, Professional? Social media. Which one? LinkedIn. 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 Right? <coughs> the point here is, now if you are on LinkedIn and you connected people, that means you see some status messages. That means you can keep up to date with what others are seeing. So, now on one hand, <coughs> you, know, you want to get your work done. On the other hand, uh, you want to keep up to date with the trends. Right? For example, these days, um, uh, uh, the large number of unfilled jobs in data science or big data. And today, you know, we just passed hype of, you know, the, the Gartner <coughs> has this curve or hype curve, right? You guys know? Do you know Gartner hype curve? Do you know? <coughs> so figure out. So what the point here is that uh, what you do to improve your general knowledge and all that is whenever you hear something new, take down. I don't have to ask you a question whether you learn from, but always take down and then go and find out what it is for yourself. That will make this class very interesting. Right? So uh, look at the latest Gartner hype curve and your job is to tell us what is at the top of that curve uh, right now. In the next class, come and offer that, okay? But just before what is latest now, at the you know, curve like looks like this, right? So you know, if the, the, there's a growth, uh, there is a height of the height and then everything goes down because things are harder in, uh, to achieve than people thought it would be and longer, it takes longer and takes more investment and all. So, you know, people are struggling to get the value uh, uh, from the investment they have made or, you know, return on investment kind of stuff. And then people figure that out and some of, many of them start to again uh, go up and, you know, uh, become more important and then they become mature technologies kind of thing, right? So, three years ago, uh, uh, the thing that on the top was cloud computing. And just before the latest one which he is going to find out is, uh, was big data. So big data is past the peak, according to Gartner. And it may, you know, but the point here is that, so uh, the fact is that <coughs> with the big data, uh, which in itself is an interesting topic to talk about, and I, I, uh, I gave two keynotes this year already, I'm giving, giving third on that at the IT for big data in the next month, month of next. Um, uh, there's a lot of interesting thing going on there. Um, how would you even know 
what will be hot when you are going to graduate? You are going to graduate in two years or one year. And you want meaty, meaty venison, you want very, um, no, I am a vegetarian, but, uh, very, uh, you know, um, uh, good job, very exciting job. You want to work for the hottest company on the earth at that time. How, how are you going to figure out? Well, you have to presume this kind of information, right? So anyway, um, so um, the other thing is, um, please find uh, on your own that or, uh, the, so so once you find another thing, everybody needs to find out is what was the hashtag used. I know what it is, but I don't want to tell you now. So. Um, uh, and then there is also for that same hashtag dot org is a website which has all the information about web at 25. And that there are two critical components of the web and we you know we already discussed that right okay. What is W3C? What are the post sorry question? What are the core standards for the web and provide the links to them? Right? So core standard would be right now HTML5. What else? CSS. CSS. Mm -hmm. Right. So Surinder, do you know what the CSS do? Uh, yeah, styling and uh, everything. Okay. Uh, web. Um, all right. Now this class has in you know the title Web 3.0, right? Well then. That is web 1.0 and 2.0. What are they? When did they each start? So, so web 1 started in 1989 or 90 or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. when, did, when did web 2.0 start? Uh, it certainly did not start 2006 because uh, uh, the Facebook was already a company. Do you know which year Facebook started? 2005. So, so the point is though that um, um, it was somewhere in 2002 uh, and you know in 2003 where um, uh, then we started to have what is called as UCG. So UGC. UGC. What is UGC? User generated content. So, what what really changed with user generated content? What did, what, what really changed? A lot of data. That's true. But something else. But who could who could write? You could who could also unstructured so data. the red was read mostly for most people. Yeah, unstructured data. That too, but the point is, here is an important distinction. We always try to, you know, get a sense what is at the core of the thing, of any phenomena. So, with web 1.0, if I ever wanted to publish on the web, I needed to have access to the server. I need to send something, a file to system admin, and he will deploy the file, and then it will be it will made available because anybody can put the file, thing will break, and a lot of problems were there, right? And security issues, many other things. With web 1.2, what happened is that anybody could be an author. Anybody can express themselves in multitude of ways. So any user can easily write what they want to write, publish. You can blog, you can write a comment, you can put a post. These are all variations of the user generated content. You have forum, right? Right, okay, that kind of stuff. So um, uh, what was uh, does anybody know one of the most, uh, the earliest uh, uh, web 2.0 company that was very successful? MySpace. Okay. Right? And um, you know, Facebook came after that and yet took over. And uh, why? Well, I'm not going to that. This is a little bit takes aside. But, <laughs> But, but you know these are very interesting uh, point of view. In fact, they are very important from a technical perspective also. So I'll give you one important point: is that there are some decisions that people made about distribution of the you know and who controlled what and what kind of flexibility was provided. 
right? So uh, Facebook was rather slow to move and make it more open, more flexible, and you make it harder for users to do, or you ask them to do only a certain way, and uh, users find it harder. You know, something else that is easier to use will surpass. This has happened very all the time. So when the web started, um, um, uh, the um, one of the earliest uh, big company on the web was Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Right. So before Yahoo, there was uh, how do you find uh, content? So I, I remember the evolution of web. Right. Uh, so uh, earlier, when um, I started using web in '92, so it's very, you know in fact, I mean, very few people use web uh, when I started using the web. Uh, uh, we had this uh, pre Mozilla browser, and then came Mozilla was so. Another very important thing in the web that I've got in terms of tool is the browser. Okay. Um, and um, uh, the free browser started to come, uh, and the Mozilla was uh, the first very important one. So by the time Mozilla was there, I was using the web. And um, in fact, it so happened that uh, we started a project in 1993, which became a commercial product which was a web search related product in 1995 from Belcore. I used to work for a company called Belcore, Bell Communications Research. Uh, it did not become a very big uh, uh, product because um, um, uh, our um, uh, business people, it's a, it's a large company, so our business people were stupid. We had, they, they, those were MBAs. And the MBAs um, uh, tried to make decisions and they had, don't have concept of you know, technology driven company. They want everything worked out. They want business plan. And you look at internet, and you know, internet, you don't have 50 page business plan and things don't work out according to 50 page business plan because you don't know the users. You don't, you don't have 10 users you can survey. Anybody can be using it, right? But it will consume something part of it. So you would not be able to, uh, so, so um, they did not know what the heck is internet market or web market. And so they insisted that our product be only sold to the baby bells. That existing customers, enterprise customers. So other companies like Verity came and uh, then they took over, you know, uh, they became much larger than, than what we could do. Uh, but um, so, so um, all right, so, so they, then these, um, uh, the thing was, the, the thing that, the point that I want you to take away here is that ease of use, distribution of control, if you only have few people who can write, the amount of things you can write is very minimal. In web to oh, so many people can write, so the amount of content variety kept on increasing, right? Coming back to the uh, big company Yahoo that I was talking about, I, I want to make one point there. So after initial, uh, you know, I used to remember in 92, 93, all the URLs for all the websites that I was interested in because there were only a few thousands. There are some basically website at uh, basically computer science departments and some companies. And IBM would have a website and some major technology company would have a website and then so, so, uh, so, uh, computer science. And I would know other researchers uh, who would have web pages. I remember them. I go to them, you know, I people start putting their papers uh, there and, and, and then we wanted to then, hey, what did you publish? Let's go there. And then what happened is that Product literatures got put up on the web. Rather than selling marketing literature by mail, people put it on the web saying, hey, go and get them. So you just have to remember uh, the company uh, name or come to company's website and then you can get latest literature. So no longer shipping off you know, CDs and uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, flyers and all that stuff. But what happened was, uh, here's the interesting I want to share, uh, that um, in, I believe, 2008 time, Yahoo had was very very uh, 2007 eight. Yahoo was the largest internet company, and it had um, a very uh, significant directory. So the after uh, initial um, you know uh, thing called Gopher and other things, then you can figure out what those things are. Um, then came the directory, and the directory had a structure, and um, we are going to learn something about ontology in this class. But the first ontology, as far as I know, is uh, a person named Srinija. She was an ontologist at Yahoo. Her job was to define how the structure looks like, the textual only. In the sports, I will have 
uh, would I have separate link for a football, professional football and college football or I would have same link? Right, same, same, uh, same, sub, sub, uh, you know, uh, uh, category. That decision is something that she drew, or she was in charge of, finally, finally in charge, uh, uh, main person in charge of the decision. So that is a, a task of ontologies. How do you classify the concepts? How do you organize the concepts? But what happened was that you, it's a, you created this thing. Uh, first of all, you have to make decision manually as to uh, what categories I want to have. That is a scalability problem because the world has so many things to talk about, so many different ways, right? The second is that the the speed at which pages grew, even before Web 2.0, was at a very large pace. So instead of thousands and hundreds of thousands of pages, you got into millions. Now, every if every day uh, 10,000 pages are created, how are you going to create an index for each of them? The idea was that you created a, a Yahoo. Uh, directly structure with a, a, a node, let's say professional football, and every uh, you need to put that in that link to all the football uh, pa uh, professional football related pages, starting with team pages, or owners pages, or whatever those things are, right? And somebody has to say, oh, that is a page that I will put it here, not here. So that is a human decision. So they had basically editors, paid persons. At one point in time, they had nine thousand of those people. So, it became, and, and a single person in a day, I was told by somebody at Yahoo, was able to categorize 50 uh, websites a day. But with so many of the web pages being created and sites created, you could not keep up. That is why the model for directory as a way of finding information on the web could not scale. And hence was the birth of or the need for search. Now, before Google, there were two, three, four very, um, by the instead of, uh, in addition to Yahoo, uh, Yahoo uh, uh, there was also Lycos uh, and uh, there was one more, uh, you know, company, I forget, in Europe, I former student work for that. Uh, there were also, uh, um, uh, if I remember that company, had two million pages catalog. That was the Now, um, uh, so before uh, Google was, uh, <coughs> was a couple of uh, well-known companies. Uh, there was one called Excite, and Excite is important. I'm going to make. Uh, I'm going to say something because Excite had um, the search engine, and its search engine was basically an IR search engine, right? Information retrieval search engine. And the IR search engine um, uh, was, um, uh, you know, so so the the main principle behind that was TF idea, right? So, do you know what is TF idea? Start frequency and start frequency. Yes. So, so, so basically, how frequently some, uh, given the size of the page with so many words, uh, how many times that term that you are searching for appears in that, and how often it appears in various documents? Is this document one that is far more than any other document? So that is what is captured as a term frequency, universe document frequency. And so the idea also, if I can put, uh, suppose there is a page on car, and if I put, um, uh, uh, mention car 100 times on the page, that will come up higher. So people could game the system very well, right? Because just put the same, they want, they have a page on car and they want it to come up top, ta, you know, uh, on the top, we just uh, stuff it with car, right? And that is the uh, reason why, um, uh, and, and Alta Vista, the second one was Alta Vista, very well known. The Alta Vista was also, uh, had already come up, started to do uh, image indexing, search and index, you know, uh, and all the stuff. And it had, um, it was fairly significant, and then came Google. What was, um, what was the year Google was founded? Nineteen ninety-seven. Right? What year did Google go public? Two thousand and four. This is very important because it's very personal for me. I'll explain to you why. Um, so, uh, so, so. Um, I wonder what Hotmail. I, I, I heard when I was there. Hotmail also was more familiar in the Yahoo's people. Hotmail was is it was email. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm not discussing it. Yeah, that's why I'm not discussing it. So it was an important uh, internet company. It was first web-based. Oh, you are web-based. Mail. Right? That is the thing that Microsoft bought. Um, so, 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 what was the very really interesting thing that Google did? Asia, right? Mm -hmm. But what is so interesting about it? Yeah, well, it's not up to you, the publisher. It's up to other people to leak to you, right? Yes. So it is using social uh, information. The fact that social in the sense, the fact that somebody, people, some people are feeling that. Your, I have chosen to link to your page, which so they are, they are giving credit to you. They are giving, they are saying that your content is important, right? And they did not have to decide. It is people at large that are deciding what is important, right? Very important. It is not purely based on technical things like TFIDF or the other there are a number of other things we can talk about. Because when you have those just purely technical thing that few people can decide or content developer can decide, they can, the system can be gained. But when everyone decides, you know, you create a page and you decide to cite my page and he decides, to decide, he decides to link to my page, then both of you are putting some level of, you know, uh, value into my content from where you are, from the part of the page that actually points to you. There's a lot more to it, but, right? So that is very interesting aspect. This is generally important for Web 2 and 3 anyway, so that's, one, that's why I want to mention it. All right. Um, uh, uh, and I'll come to Google you know, a bit later on, uh, because uh, whenever I used to, I started the company in 99, and when I would go to uh, sell uh, my stuff, uh, people would say, but how are you better than Google? So, um, uh, and, I'll, I'll, and we'll come to that, because the, the, the thing was semantics, and we were, I think better. But there were a number of things that went on. There's nothing to, that has nothing to do with technology. Uh, one is that uh, Google, the reason I mentioned, uh, you know, 1997 to 2004 is that Google had Sequoia Capital and Sys Venture Capital uh, uh, behind it. They gave, uh, they, they gave uh, Google $25 million. They stuck to Google in thick and thin because what happened in 2000? Market Nasdaq crashed. This is called Internet Bubble Bust. And at that point, uh, they stuck with Google. Um, and this was very important because um, what is Google's business model? What has been Google's business model? Where does it make money? Advertising. Advertisement. And what happened was that um, in uh, uh, all the VCs, so-called smart guys, decided that you cannot, uh, uh, that th th there is no business model in advertisement. Starting 2000 until 2004, when Google actually went public and showed that they are making money off advertisement, they were not ready to believe. I know it because I met 40 of them. So, 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 um, uh, uh, but I'll come to that, you know, and other things because when you get to semantics, we're going to do that. So, um, <coughs> Okay, right, so that was uh, Web 2.0, right? So we said, well, it started around 2002, 2003, and, um, uh, and, and you know, important times are, you know, Facebook, uh, you know, is very important. MySpace is important, Facebook is important, and, you know, it's not been that long. It has not been even a decade, and many of you can't, uh, you know, live without it. Maybe you guys can, hopefully. But you know, there are so many people in the world that can't live without it. You think about that's become primary mode of communication. So I was visiting India two years ago, and there's the story about um, you know the taxi drivers. Um, they don't have a lot of money, but they are buying um, uh, uh, phone, mobile phone, just to be able to uh, Facebook. That uh, it is that kind of. I think India is has become the largest market for Facebook surpassed any other country right now, if I remember correctly. So, uh, and then, uh, when did, uh, there's another major company in Web 2.0, Twitter? When did that start? Twitter, five years ago? Uh, a little more, 2007. Right. Such a, um, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, unless I'm mistaken in 2009, but I think there were two. So, so it's been, um, uh, so it could be, it could have been five. Let's see, uh, you know, you can. You know, this says, by the way, uh, has started to go in uh, the Q uh, question answering thing. Look at that. That's smart, isn't it? Earlier they did not used to do this, but this is relatively new. And why? Because they went with three ways. Yeah. <coughs> so you're going to have fun. I'll show you the origins of the same ideas that uh, are in the published patent that was filed in 2000. Okay. So, um, and then um, we are talking about Web 3.0. I don't know whether there is any uh, clear date for Web 3.0 per se. Uh, we can do it, we, we can say it differently. Um, uh, I can show you uh, many ideas of what we will discuss as we went to 3.0 uh, in the company that I started in 1999 uh, and uh, in the patent that was filed in 2000 and in the patent that was awarded in 2001 with semantic web in the title. Right? So, or we can say, but its success started with um, things like Google doing knowledge graph in a very large scale. And there were examples before that, but on a very large scale when it started, like Facebook. So it's like, just the same way, there's 2000 or 2003 for Web 2.0, you can say that uh, Web 3.0, or semantic uh, kind of things on the web started in 2000. I had commercial product, search engine, uh, semantic search engine in 2000, and, a cust and, and three customers then. But, uh, so we can debate that, but now is when it is quite picking up, and in many different ways. So uh, that is, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll of course discuss a lot about Web 3.0, so let's not uh, do that. But one thing I would like to do, is to think about, and again come prepared in your last class, so this kind of more framework is, come up with one exemplar application that we have not already discussed here, for each other thing. So the next question now is, is Web 3.0 synonymous with semantic web? I'm going to defer this question. Right? And now, I what time is it? Uh, when is officially the class supposed to end? Oh, okay. So I might have to end the class anyway. But this is at the right time. When what I will do is that I will start the next class uh, with uh, uh, this introduction to semantic web. And um, I hope that um, um, uh, uh, you, because you have almost many of you have gone through already the slide presentation. Um, I would, uh, uh, we can go faster or uh, uh, we might slow down where I have a lot more to offer um, in the side stories and this history and such um, uh, that is not on the slide, usually you usually can't put on the slide, right? But uh, my main objective there would be to put intuition, uh, to, to share with you the intuition. Because here is a very interesting thing, so you, uh, you know, when I started this company in 1999, and the company grew something, you know, because we had 50, 20 people. And then my employee said that we, we need a solid, you know, strength because most of the people in my company were my former students, you know, you know. So they came over, you know, they graduated, they came over, they first did internship in my company, then they joined the company. But uh, have it now? no, so it was acquired in 2002 when we had 30, 35 employees. That was acquired further in 2004, that was acquired further in 2006, acquired one more time, so right now it is fifth uh, uh, incarnation of that. I lost touch with the company at the, when I moved here from Dayton, uh, from Athens, Georgia, that is where the, I founded the company. And it had moved to Atlanta, but um, I used to work, you know, I was chief scientist before. When I started, I was a CEO and president and general, chairman of the board, and I got the money from the venture capital. But then when it was acquired, I don't own it, but uh, all the technology that was, was under my control. Uh, but then when I moved here, obviously, it didn't make sense. So, so, but the product still survives. I can still show you the published papers and the currently deployed commercial product at the largest banks in the world. So majority of the 30 largest banks in the world have the product that we uh, designed in 2002. Uh, no, 2003 also. So, and they, that, that, is, uh, that is because of uh, the uh, Patriot Law. 
so if I design a product using the table, I'll come to that little bit later. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, all right, so so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll go with that uh, you know uh, uh, presentation. So come prepare with that. But one more thing is I uh, think I want you to do because that question was asking uh, is semantic web uh, and cement three point are the same. So this particular presentation is very interesting. Uh, and you know, so and, and this is where some people. Uh, the problem is our ability to create it. This uh, this presentation will um, uh, give you different points of view. And it basically, there are this kind of stuff that uh, there don't there's no single answer. So we have to come up with our own answer, right? So that's what we'll do. Um, uh, and uh, I will post a thing where you know a link to this. So just copy and start creating this page. And um, um, let's see. I'm going to appoint some person to help me out a little bit, kind of you know, uh, not exactly as a TA, but uh, help out as a little organization kind of in the class. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we we should meet very briefly. Uh, so you just catch up. Um, did you go to other? Place or yes. Oh, okay. But did you, you did not see I my see email? email yeah. so, yeah. Okay. Remember, guys, um, it is expected that you actually check Google Plus twice a day, twice a day. Okay. This is very important because that, that dynamism. It's like you are working in a company on on a, on a product and service, as I say, and obviously the things come. Somebody sends a mail saying we're going to have a meeting, and that is going to come by email, right? So so we're going to uh, have. To make the web and Google's community part of our daily life, right? and then I will hopefully see you guys posting the things on there. I want you to see uh, post something saying, "Oh, we discussed in the class. Here's something interesting I read," and share with everybody. That is where I want to go, rather than all coming from me. Yeah? All right. So that's for today. You can stop.